Hello, lovely people. So I'm going to give you guys a few strategies that the Lord trained me in um, when he assigned me to a church home and the church home had covenanted witches already there. And then it was rebellion going on in the church. And the Bible says that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So because there was rebellion in leadership and um, rebellion in some of the people in the congregation, the curse caused this land. So these witches were able to thrive in this environment until I came because the Lord signed me to go there. He gave me strategy uh, before going there. And also, um, when I think back on my assignment, the first month I went to that church, the Lord was dressing me in the spirit with the whole armor of God. And he was giving me instructions. And I did not remember the instructions he gave me. I just remember the last thing that he said when he put on the last gear, the last piece of my gear. And he said, fight. So I remember that now um, that I'm outside of the environment. Um, so the Lord sent me to this church to intercede and to stand in the gap. And, uh, there was covenant tent witches in the church. And then again, people within the church operating in rebellion. So this witchcraft is landing. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about how the Lord showed me this sexually seductive spirit on the altar or the spirit of licentiousness. That's what he called it. Um, so I'm going to tell you the strategies he gave me, and then I'm going to get into uh, the encounter and what the Lord showed me and how I countered it and how I combated it and how the Lord confirmed that he was just in the midst and he was worn on my behalf. In the natural, he showed me with my natural eyes and he showed me in the spirit. So uh, one thing the Lord would have me to do was to fast. So I would fast from Saturday morning, the time I woke up until Sunday around four o'clock, which was the time the service was over. So... All day Saturday, half day Sunday, I was fasting. The reason I would fast is because when you're empty of yourself, you have no strength to respond to yourself. One of the number one attacks they were using was offense. So if I'm weak in my flesh, I cannot operate in offense. And if I'm empty of myself, the Holy Spirit is filling me up. So I know I'm on assignment. I know I'm giving myself over to the Holy Spirit. So I'm empty in myself and I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to enter and I have no room for offense. Um, so fasting was the one thing to just subdue my flesh. Uh, so I would fast that whole Saturday and all throughout service um, Sunday until like 4.30. And another strategy, he told me to go into the sanctuary like an hour and 30 minutes early and pray, walk around the sanctuary and pray, pray over the altar and pray. When he first gave me those instructions, I didn't let anyone know because there was a church service held in the morning and then ours was held in the afternoon. So I spoke to the pastor who owns the property. I said, hey, do you mind if I come in and pray before our church services? He said, no, him and his wife agreed. So I would go around and I would pray. And then the enemy, once I told the head pastor what I was doing, just because again, like that's the authority of the house that I was in. Again, the enemy gets wind, right? So now they come and try to infiltrate. They would try to come. Um, so I would have to come earlier you had like these workers of iniquity trying to eavesdrop and come and to disrupt the prayer. And the third strategy the Lord gave me was um, me and a sister in this in my region. We will get together on Saturday nights and we will pray for church services for Sunday. So we will pray in advance for all the church service that will occur on Sunday that the Lord will have his way in the services. So on this one particular Saturday night, I'm in a fasting posture and I'm praying, I think the hours was between 9 p.m. and 12 a.m. And I um, I ended up falling asleep and the Lord gave me a vision when I was sleeping or a dream when I was sleeping. And in the dream, there was a woman standing on the altar and the woman was dressed like in this knitted outfit, black knitted outfit all the way down. But it was like crocheted kind of. And she had no uh, underwear on, no bra on. You could see straight through it. And she was on the altar. In the thumbnail, I have a picture of Sierra, the singer, uh, because that's how long it was. And that's how see-through it was. Then I have another picture of another woman who, um, that's the exact outfit she had on. And that's the exact woman. And I got her picture because after the Lord showed me that, this woman popped up as a suggested person on my Instagram. So I knew it was one of the workers of iniquity because they were stalking me on Instagram and YouTube. So um, I knew this was one of either a practitioner that they hired. So that's her picture. I didn't put her face on there, but that was the woman that I saw on the altar. Saturday night, I had that dream of the woman on the altar, standing on the altar, just with this knitted outfit on, just naked. And in the dream, I said to the pastor, I said, you don't think anything's wrong with that? You think that's okay? 
And I just got up and left. Like, I'm not about to agree with this. I'm not coming into agreement with this. Um, because again, a lot of people in churches, they stay, even though things are out of order, like you don't have to stay. If it's against the word of God, if it's not lined up with the Bible, if it's against the Holy Spirit, you can leave. You have authority to leave. You have the right to leave that church. So that's what I did in the dream. I got up and left and the pastor came after me and he, he I forgot what we were saying in the hallway, but I said, that's not okay. You, you're not going to say anything. That's not okay. And he ended up turning it on me in a dream. He said, you caused Jose hands to be cut off or no, you, he said, you caused, you injured Jose. So Jose was a man that was going to another, the earlier service. He was a part of a, the other service and the Lord showed me he was a worker of iniquity. So again, like when I come in the altar and pray, he will be behind the altar doing some witchcraft. So the Lord showed me that in a natural so in this dream, I knew that Jose was doing witchcraft as well. So Jose, a part of a witchcraft coven, probably the same coven as these witches. Um, and he got involved. And I said, Lord, see, Jose's getting involved in something he shouldn't have been getting involved in. So again, now you target it. So Jose got involved in a war he shouldn't have got involved in. So now he's definitely out of order. Um, he wasn't a part of the congregation. He was a part of a different congregation. But he began to do the work of the devil and join in the witches that uh, was in the congregation that I was in to start helping. And again, the purpose of these witches is to overtake the man of God. If the man of God is preaching the truth, if the man of God is speaking against the enemy and speaking against the kingdom of darkness and preaching biblical truths, he's under attack. So the Lord sent me to stand in the gap. And at this time, these witches are sending arrows. And again, if you're in rebellion, you can't see it. If you're walking in darkness or if you're walking and seeing your spiritual eyes are not open, so at the, the, in that dream, that's how it ended. He said, I, I, I hurt Jose, but what happened is Jose hands got cut off in the dream. He was amputated. So I knew the witchcraft of his hands was cut off. So the next morning, um, when I wake up, I'm getting ready for church to leave out, to go pray in the sanctuary. And I just keep hearing the word licentiousness, licentiousness. I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what you are saying. Licentiousness, licentiousness. And the Holy spirit told me, make sure you look up this word before you leave. So I looked up the word licentiousness. And um, it says, a throwing off of sexual restraints, lewd character or behavior. And then there's a, another definition, behavior that is sexually uncontrolled and socially unacceptable. So this is who was on the altar was the spirit of licentiousness. And one of the major attacks that they send against the man of God is sexual perversion. It's lust. It, these are age old tricks, right? So this is one of the attacks that they were planning against the man of God that day. Um, so I went, the Lord showed me the word licentiousness. He gave me the word licentiousness and I looked it up and I found out what it meant. So on my way from home to the church, I just began to pray and war against the spirit of licentiousness. And the fact that the spirit was on the altar. Oh, I tore that altar up when I went to go pray. I tore that altar up in prayer. I mean, every prayer I can think of asking the Lord to send as many angels as he can possibly send to send fire from heaven down on that altar. I mean, I went in on that altar and I stood in that spot where the witch, where the witch licentiousness was in the natural realm. I stood in that, that spot and I just prayed and I prayed fire come down. Lord, I declare there's a holy wall of fire from this altar ascending up into the heavens. I declare there are angels descending and ascending on this altar. I mean, I went in in prayer and I walked around that altar. I laid on that altar. I prayed on that altar. And the one young lady who was seeing on the altar, which the Lord showed me, she was a worker of iniquity. Um, either she was an unconscious witch or she knew what she was doing um, either way. So I prayed on the altar and she normally get up there and sing. She came to me like, I don't think I'm going up there today. And it's like, she could not go past. Like I prayed, Lord, I build a wall of fire around this altar. This was one of my prayers. There's linked angels all around this altar standing a shoulder to shoulder. That was one of my prayers. Like, let there be angels standing from shoulder to shoulder on this altar that no foul thing can get across this altar. I mean, I tore that altar up in prayer. She was like, I'm not going up there. Her eyes are just big. Like, I'm not going up there. And she usually said like in the second row from the uh, altar, this girl got up. She didn't go to the altar. Like, and she didn't go up there and sing. And she ran, like she ran like four rows back. And in the midst of her running, she tripped and fell. So the Lord is showing me all this stuff to show me that what I did in the spirit is now manifested in the natural. And this young woman know what she's doing. So I can't even say she's unconscious, which because she knew what she was doing. And it's like, she couldn't even go. Like when we was, it was time to worship. She went way back to almost by the door to worship at this time. And she didn't step foot on that altar, but it was a, it was a heavy attack that day that they was planning on the man of God. And uh, the Lord just sent me there and he showed me what to do. 
And again, he just quickened me in my spirit to even say that word and make sure like he put that whole, that unction, that urgency to look up that word before I left. So before, I think I was in my car, starting the car, getting ready to leave. And I looked up the word and the Lord had me to pray from the time I left home all the way till I got to the church. And then when I got in the church, he told me how to pray. And I mean, the spirit was just moving in me, telling me how to pray on that altar. Uh, but yeah, that spirit, that perverted spirit, that sexual perverted spirit, they try to place it on the altar. Um, <laughs> that's it for this story, but I have many stories. So as the Lord allows me to uh, share these stories about witchcraft in the church, um, I'll share them. So and I hope this blesses you guys. And again, seek the Holy Spirit. He is our commander in chief. He he makes us aware of the attacks of the enemy before they even happen. He shows us what they're going to do. He keeps us uh, 10 steps ahead of them, a trillion steps ahead of them, to be honest. So we're always ahead of them if we're walking with the Holy Spirit. Um, and they have no power. They have, listen, no power. When you're on assignment, if the Lord sent you, they cannot touch you. I'm telling you, I've seen this. I'm going to just put in, a, in I'm going to insert this little uh, story. So uh, one day, they just, I mean, they were sending so many people into the sanctuary to take me out, right? I'm the intercessor. I'm walking in holiness. I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. I'm walking in a fasting posture with my eyes fixed on the heels where my help come from. So I'm seeking the Lord. I'm not walking compromised. When I first came, my thought life was a little bit messed up because I was in a hope deferred season. So the Lord pulled me out of this, like, no, you got to fight. It's time to fight. So now when I got straightened up and the Lord corrected me and began to dress me in the whole armor of God and tell me to fight, it, it was on from that time. Like they would begin to send people into the churches. I mentioned in my, one of my shorts, they sent these Cameroonian guys in there and they were always so obvious. They will always sit right by me or behind me. I mean, it just was so disgusting. Like I would get irritated in my flesh. Like Jesus, how, how long are they going to do this? How, like, they don't know that I know. <laughs> like, and one time this, this is, I was just like, at this point, I'm like, Lord, I'm tired of playing with these little children. <laughs> Cause that's how it was. They brought it. They brought three people this day. This was on a, I think a full moon or a new moon. Um, it, the full moon or a new moon was on Sunday and they brought these two guys, um, and uh, it was another guy, just random. He comes sit next out of all the people. This is first time in the church. Out of all the people, he comes sit right next to me and start talking to me. And he asked me, like, what's my testimony or something like that? And because I know who he is in spirit, I just was real short with him. And then he started chanting, literally sat next to me and started chanting. So I look. And I get up and I change my seat. I haven't been sitting in that seat ever since I came to that church. I changed my seat right after that. Like you obvious, like you're obvious. And um, so there was these other two guys in there that day. And I just began to worship. Like the Lord showed me worship. You disarm them in worship. So I'm disarming them in worship. And I just start chanting the word of God. I said, one could put a thousand to flight. One could put a thousand to flight. One could put a thousand to flight. It's one of me. And it's a lot of them. One could put a thousand to flight. I could put a thousand of them in flight. And I just kept declaring it and chanting it. One could put a thousand in flight. One could put a thousand in flight. And I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm worshiping the Lord. One of the guys looked and he ran out the sanctuary. And then the other guy left. He looked and he left out the sanctuary. And I'm thinking they're gone. They're not gone. They're in the hallway, but they cannot come into the sanctuary. So when you are worshiping, you are building a wall of fire in the sanctuary. You're building fire. Like you're literally, heaven is coming down in the sanctuary. Angels are being dispatched in the sanctuary. So that's where the worship come in. That's where declaring the word of God and praying in the sanctuary. There's one more story I'm going to tell. <laughs> so um, they, again, they keep sending people in. So one day they sent these two people in, they were African descent and they're very militant, like almost like in sync. These It's a young man and young woman. They almost in sync. So we prayed at this church. So we have a time of prayer before the word of God came forth and, um, so I go all the way. The Lord showed me who these people are in the spirit. So I go all the way in the back of the sanctuary to pray instead of going to the altar and pray. So I go to the back. Do you know the young man that came, the two, it was a woman, a young woman, a young man that came. The young man came all the way to the back. This is first time in this church. He came all the way to the back of the sanctuary where I was to pray. And I just began to war. I'm binding you up. You have no power. Like I understood the power that I had in Christ. I understood the power of Christ and I understood my position. I knew my jurisdiction. I knew I was sent. I wasn't went. So again, you have to stand on the power of God. And these people will try to try you. So if the Lord sent you to a church and you know you are there on, on assignment, you know the Lord sent you. Look to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and stand his power. Don't take any pleasure in shrinking back. And you stand there until the Lord tell you your assignment is up. 
So again, um, and most of these people that they will send will only come once. They will never come back again. <laughs> they come once and they never came back. But there were some that was persistent, the ones that were assigned there, the witches that were assigned in the church. But again, the Lord is going to deal with them. Um, he's not playing. It says, you're not fighting against me. You're fighting against the Lord. So victory belongs to Jesus. <laughs> Bye for now. See you in the next video.